Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Njagu for those who don't know and I have a fresh prophetic word that I want to share with you all today. So this is a prophetic word for people who have asked God a specific question or specific questions in this season and haven't received a response. So this isn't necessarily a word for people who are just struggling to hear the voice of the Lord, period. I have another word addressing that and I will just add it onto the screen if that's for you. This word specifically is more geared towards people who have been getting some information from God in this season, but you're just not hearing the information that you feel like you need the most, okay? So for some of you, it's probably even feeling like the Lord is speaking to you about really everything but the one main thing that it is that you truly want to know. The revelation that the Lord gave me is that he's practicing strategic silence with some people and he's doing it for a reason which this video is going to explain. So as we grow in the Lord, we recognize that God is so intentional that everything that he does serves a purpose, right? Everything that the Lord does carries weight, everything he does carries meaning even his silence, okay? Meaning that God is so intentional that even his silence carries purpose. And for some of you, God has been practicing strategic silence because he wants you to grow in spiritual maturity. So a mature believer who has asked God a question and received no response, they're usually going to say, wow, I still haven't heard from God. Therefore, maybe I have some unconfessed sin in my life, right? Or maybe I need to go on a fast so I can hear the word of the Lord more clearly. But a more mature believer might say, well, I've prayed and I fasted and I still don't have my answer. So what is it that God might be trying to teach me through his silence, right? That is what next level maturity looks like as a believer, paying attention to what God says and also what God chooses not to say because God doesn't do anything by mistake, right? So as a more mature believer, you're paying attention to what he's told you and what he refuses to tell you because God is too intentional for his word to mean everything, but for his silence to mean nothing. The silence carries revelation and the silence carries purpose. And for some of you, that purpose is growth, meaning that God is talking less in order to push you into increased faith, right? He's talking less in order to force you, so to speak, for lack of a better word, to grow in your faith. Now, the Bible does make it clear that we as believers should strive to be spiritually mature, right? We're called to graduate from being babies in the faith to being adults in this walk with God, right? And this is the principle that God is revealing when he talks about going from milk to meat or going from milk to solid food. It's talking about spiritual maturity. But what the Holy Spirit revealed to me even beyond this is that babies don't just drink milk, they drink it very often because the milk isn't as rich as the meat is, right? It doesn't have as many calories in it, so it doesn't satisfy them for long enough. It doesn't satiate them for long periods of time, but it's all that they're able to, it's all that they're mature enough to take, it's all that they're mature enough to handle, right? So they need to constantly be fed around the clock while an adult who eats solid food can go several hours between meals. It keeps them fuller for longer. So as we mature in the faith, we stop being that little kid who needs fresh milk day and night. Instead, we become like Elijah, who was able to travel for 40 days off of the strength of the meals given to him in the wilderness, right? We become able to stand on the revelation that we already have, even though we don't know as much as we'd like to. 
And when the clock keeps ticking and we don't hear anything new, it doesn't shake our faith like it used to in the past because we're beyond that stage where we need constant affirmation or 10,000 confirmations, right? We get to a place where we say, Lord, you already told me what to do. You already showed me what to do. You already put that conviction on me. So I'm going to stand on what I know and stop expecting you to babysit me through this process. I'm going to have to live off of your last instruction, your last statement, your last word a little bit longer because holding on to that word in the desert is what's going to build me up in the faith. The person who constantly needs a word from the Lord to confirm that they're on the right path is usually going to be a person who's less mature in their faith journey, right? But a seasoned believer is one who says, I know that God told me to move and it's looking like that's all that he's willing to tell me. So I'm going to start making decisions based on the word that I've been given. And I'm going to trust that the sound mind that God gave me and the lessons that he's already taught me and the Holy Spirit who is within me together are going to be enough to help me do this thing right. I'm not going to wake up every day for two months asking God for more details. I'm not going to go three months asking God for, you know, confirmation after confirmation after confirmation. I'm going to go into my closet and pack up a suitcase and trust that he'll give me the rest of the plan in due time and in due season. I'm going to choose to be satisfied with the little that I do know and trust that whatever he's holding back, he's holding back for a reason. If we expect God to babysit us through every process that we go through in this life, we're never going to grow, okay? It's like a, a kid that's learning to ride a bike. At some point, the adult who's with them has to take the hands off the handlebars, right? At some point, they have to let go so that you, the child, can learn how to steer. And those first few moments, once they've stepped away from your side, it feels scary, right? But them giving you that distance it forces you to learn how to keep yourself steady. It forces you to learn how to stay on the path. It teaches you how to take responsibility for yourself. It teaches you how to apply the teaching that the adult in your life has given you, right? It teaches you how to hold yourself accountable and be responsible, you know, for your own life. And the result of that brief scary moment is that you have been forced to grow. You've learned a new skill, you're at a new capacity level, and you've also achieved a new level of freedom. So for some of you, God has been silent because he's maturing you in the faith, especially for those of you who already know in your heart what it is that God wants you to do, right? And for some of you, the situation that you're in, in and of itself is the confirmation, right? Some of you, the situation is the confirmation. Your environment is literally proving to you every day that you heard God right, but you're still saying, Lord, confirm it one more time. Lord, give me the details. Give me the blue. Print. Lord, I'll do it when you give me the plan. And all you're doing is holding up the process because for some of you, you're being called to stretch yourself, to stretch yourself in the faith and be like, you know what? I heard next to nothing, but that little bit, that little bit that I've heard is enough to cause me to move. Okay. We have to keep in mind that there's a fine line between asking God for more information because you want to be sure and you genuinely don't know versus asking God for more information because you lack faith, you lack confidence, and you're low-key just trying to protract the process, okay? So at some point, as we grow in the faith, we get to a situation, we get to a point where we realize that the Lord has told us everything that he wants us to know. And our role, therefore, is to just start walking that thing out by faith and do the best that we can with what it is that we've been given. So I hope that this was helpful to you. The Lord is saying that some of you are being matured in the faith. And that is the reason why some of you haven't received a whole blueprint or a specific 
answer to certain questions that you've asked him. And for those who don't know, the Lord has called me into life coaching. So if you are in the market for a life coach, or if you felt the Holy Spirit putting it on your heart, that you need somebody to professionally coach and mentor you, then please go ahead and check out my information in the description and book a coaching call. And that's it from me. I'll see you all next time. God bless you and keep the faith.